oil and gas essentially affects Alaska through two channels. It affects state government from 04 to 15, it paid for 90% of, of uh, unrestricted GF, and it affects the economy because it's been the engine, right? And we've estimated that it's arguably responsible for about one third of all the jobs in Alaska, oil and gas that is, right? And so most of the conversation that we've had over the last few years has been in how to use savings in order to fix the government channel, right? And so we have this deficit, two and a half, three billion dollars, depending on how you estimate it, and we can use savings in order to plug that hole and have a functioning government. Now, the difficulty is if we are operating in a world where oil and gas will no longer play as important of a role in supporting many of the other industries that are contingent or whose performance is contingent on oil and gas being uh, what it was in the 80s, 90s, and, and, and the 2000s, then what's next? What's the economic engine? And one of the questions that I ask myself, and I'm not advocating for this, is Alaska's GDP right now is $50 billion, right? It dropped by $10 billion from 14 to now. The permanent fund, as you know, is $64 billion. So we have an asset that's bigger than the overall state economy. Should there be a mechanism by which we link the permanent fund to Alaska's economy, right? Maybe rightfully so. In the past, it's been invested in assets and in funds that have nothing to do with the Alaska economy. It's been diversified. It's grown. We are at a stage, it's a rainy day fund. We are at a stage where potentially the Alaska economy is shifting or going in a different direction. And so I'm posing myself the question and, and stating it here, if the conversation we're having is how to potentially fund government, we should also be having a conversation about should the permanent fund play a role in creating jobs, in potentially leveraging that wealth. And so that's what I was referencing. I hope that, that makes sense. Thank you.